Welcome, everyone, to the third Thursday meetup of the West Orlando WordPress Meetup Group. I'm Rob Watson, a co-organizer and host, along with Brian Walton and Alan Feeling. West Orlando WordPress is an official WordPress Meetup Group and is affiliated with the main WordPress Orlando and WordCamp US Meetup Groups. Our presenter tonight is Patrick Alexander. Patrick is the CEO and founder of Balambico, a professional website and online solutions firm specializing in making companies look better than the competition online, starting with a stunning professional website. He was also the lead organizer of the 2020 WordCamp Miami in February. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Mathematics from Cameron University and an MBA specializing in MIS from Wayland Baptist University. Patrick is a tech savant and enthusiast who has devoted himself to the tech industry for, the, for over 20 years, gaining extensive experience in programming, web development, cybersecurity, and system administration, and a resume with related positions in the US military, universities, and internet startups. Patrick hails from Dominica in uh, the nature island of the Caribbean. His personal motto, living to not be ordinary, fuels him daily. A motivated and driven individual who knows the, that hard work and steadfast discipline is the recipe for continued success. Today, Patrick will talk about the important items you need to check off your list after launching a new website, from securing it to letting search engines know that your site exists. During the talk in the chat window and afterwards, when the recording is posted on the westorlandowp.org website, we will provide you with a handy link where you can obtain a checklist that you can use for all of your WordPress projects. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to mute their microphones for the presentation. And Patrick, thank you for being our presenter this evening. The time is now yours. Very right, great, thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, present now, and I just want to really thank everyone that time of the busy schedule to be here today, right? And hopefully you get something or a lot of things that will definitely help you, that will definitely help you with your, uh, with your, your journey on, on the website development and, and, um, and afterwards as well. So what I'm doing here, I want to share my screen. I want to share the entire screen. Got it. Great. All right. And he mentioned that I'm from Dominica. So I just want to, to just kind of scroll in here. So I'm from Dominica in the Caribbean, not the Dominican Republic. All right. And something that's really amazing about me, Dominica is only 70, it only has 70,000 people. And I would say one, of the, one out of every five people on the island uh, knows about me or might know me uh, because I was the very first person born on the day that our country gained its independence from Great Britain. And I was named after the first prime minister. And I was also held by Princess Margaret of Wales, uh, which, is the, which is the deceased sister of Queen Elizabeth. So I would like to brag that I was held by royalty. <laughs> So that's a fun fact about me. All right, something else uh, about me, as he mentioned, I am uh, the, the past lead organizer for WordCamp Miami. So if you've ever been to WordCamp Miami, uh, you probably have seen me because I had been an organizer for the last five years. I enjoy uh, WordPress and I, I enjoy sharing knowledge. And uh, one of my key, uh, my future plans is to be that that stereotypical professor with, with a tweet jacket and, and coffee mug, but that that's retirement age. So that's what I'm aspiring to 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 be. So you guys are my my pupils today. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much for for giving your time to to listen to me. And this presentation, I want it to be interactive, where I'd recommend you go to like our website, uh, balambico.co and go to tools and click on website launch checklist. So you can follow along with the presentation. And at the end of the, at the end of, when you go through each of those things, if you want us, if you want me to review, my team to review uh, what you submitted, you can hit submit. Or if not, you just can use this checklist whenever you whenever you launch a website 
and gives you a score, yes, no. And, and, and you'll notice that as well, okay? So let's get started uh, with this presentation. So now I'm going to, oh yeah, something else about the presentation that's interactive. At some point, I'm going to ask for some brave souls to leave the website in the chat so we can do some of those tests on it, on, on, your, on your new website that you launched or an existing website that you have, right? We can actually navigate it. And again, if you want to get to the, the section I, I mentioned again, you have to be a brief soul. If we discover anything that you think should not be seen by the outside world, you may want to go ahead and fix it ASAP. All right. So let's get started. So the first 10 things you should do after launching a website. It's really longer than, it's actually more than 10, but I know our attention span can be uh, after the 10, after the first 10, you're like, all right, when, when does it stop? <laughs> so the first thing you do after you launch a website, if you do it, if you don't do anything else to back it up, right? And the reason to back up your website, you know that your website is created with WordPress. And if we get to the underbelly of WordPress, you know it has many components. It has a database. It has server files. It's on a it's on a web server. It's made. It's created with plugins that that person may or may not maintain. So in case your website crashes, and and funny enough, your website can actually crash after it, it, it is just launched, right? So you definitely want to back it up. One of the methods you can do is manually, or you can use a plugin. My favorite plugin for for backing up uh, websites is All-in-One Double Migration, and I, I have a previous talk somewhere about how to do it manually, about doing a, a database dump and zipping the files. That's one way you can do it. But the All-in-One Double Migrate plugin, migration plugin, it's 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 definitely my my plugin of choice for doing it. I know they're not paying me to to boost them up, but I've used this plugin so many times to migrate websites or to just back them up in, in general and, and be amazing. The other thing that you want to do, so the first thing, so and this is how you follow along just to make sure. So you follow along, follow along with the website with this right here. This is how you follow along. Right after you put your information, do you have a backup of your website? Yes. Oh, no. All right, so that's kind of how you, you follow along on here, okay? And I'll jump back on it to that later on. We'll get back from. So make sure you update all your plugins and WordPress versions, and that including the ones from the actual themes. So actually, something I want to share with you all is that the reason I have we I have those ten lists. These are things that we either neglected to do at one point that came back to bite us. So we definitely want to share it. And some of you may have experienced some of that as well. So update all plugins, including the ones that come with the themes originally. So you know some themes have the plugins and they're not necessarily in the WordPress repo. But however, good theme developers always send updates to the theme. So if you have the, if you have the themes and you have the plugins that came with the themes, make sure you always update them. And before you do an update, be sure to back them up. Also, delete all unused plugins and themes. So even if you make a, a theme inactive uh, or a plugin inactive, it can still harm your, well, your website. Because again, these are open source. So if it's inactive, I said that temporary inactivation deleted, All right? You want to, you know that WordPress is open source. And what that means is that all developers have, all the developers have access to create plugins for WordPress. However, one of the reasons that WordPress always have updates every five months, they're normally security driven. So if you have a plugin that's dated, or it's not being used, guess what? It might not be being updated, and it could pose a security risk. 
and I'm sure if you're very active in the WordPress community, you have heard of some plugins that have that have security vulnerabilities. All right, so with that said, you want to delete the plugins and also in the themes as well. If you have a 2015 WordPress theme, default theme, right, you want to delete you want your 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 backend to look as lean as possible. Because any asset you have in there, plugins, themes, modules that you are not using, they could pose a security risk. So you definitely want to, to, to delete them if they're being used. Additionally, you want to update all your plugins and themes for the reasons I mentioned, right? If they're not up to date, the previous version could, could pose a security risk. And in addition to that, apart from WordPress being updated, I mentioned it's open source, right? It runs on PHP. PHP is always doing updates as well. So I'm sure some of you who had websites developed on WordPress 5.6 and uh, sorry, not WordPress, PHP 5.6, and we have 7.4 now or 7.3. When they made that upgrade, some of your WordPress themes, I know one for sure that was very buggy is Revolution Slider, right? You have seen that problem, and your host would have let you know, hey, we need to move up to WordPress um, PHP 7.0. So that's another important reason to always keep it up to date. So if you're up to date, then you don't have had that 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 pro that problem. The third point I have here: if you're using any any paid plugin, plan to update them. Plan to so when you're about to purchase a plugin, I know many of them says that the only the only reason that you would need to maintain your annual subscription is because uh, if you want any support. And that is true and not so true at the same time. What we've noticed recently is that if you don't, some of these versions of these plugins, if you don't pay for the, if you don't maintain that subscription, that plugin can actually mess up your site because it's not being updated. You don't get the updates. So for the same reason, so I know some of us are what you call, I call it plugin happy, you just, all right, one of the things for WordPress is that there's a plugin for everything. As you become more senior in this, you definitely want to think twice before you install certain plugins. So that's that's a, a quick tidbit. The also you also want to disable comments and enable capture on your on your on your website. Just to prevent being spammed, right? And you want to find and disable allow comments at the page level and, and, and the settings. Uh, or you could use a plugin like <laughs> Akismet Advanced Anti-Spam Security or a Google Capture to help you control spam. Additionally, permalinks. So to ensure that you have user-friendly URL, the, the newest Version of WordPress don't necessarily do that, but some versions of WordPress, previous version of WordPress, or so depending on the thing that you use, they would default to your your permalink or your URL always end up with the number at the end, right? You definitely always want the name of that page and not the the ID in the database. So on the if you ever see your website, you go dot your domain name dot com slash, and you see a number show up like equal one to three, or number in there. That means that your permanent link is not set, so the name of your page is not showing up. A number, the numerical representation of that data in the WordPress database is what shows up. So you definitely want that to show the name of the page so that that wouldn't hurt your SEO, okay? So you so that helps making sure your Puma links are set, that ensures that your SEO is, is good. I can show it to you real quick, just in case you don't know what I'm referring to. So if you come here and you go to settings, and you go to Puma links, you always ensure, so when the WordPress back and right, you want to ensure this is set or post name structure. A lot of the by default, it's like this, right? So you want to do either custom or post name. 
And when I mentioned also about the about where is it? So stuff like that. Make sure when your website is you discourage such engines from indexing the site. Make sure that this is is never checked. And actually, I'll talk about it again a little bit. And the comments. There's different ways to disable comments on the on the site. So let me just right here. So this, if you don't want to receive comments, make sure this is this is all this is unchecked. So you go discussion. All right. In addition to that, on the different pages of posts, let's see if I mean, you do quick edit and make sure it's not this is not checked. Okay. All right. So back to the the presentation. So make sure your Put my links are set. Yeah. SEO. Okay. Ensure that your content, that the keywords on your website or the website you created for your client, that it is SEO friendly. All the mat meta tags are set. You can use a plugin like Yoast to 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 help you do that to ensure that the the keywords and meta tags are set. It, I know there's other SEO strategies that, that people pay for, but at the core, the SEO still needs to be set on the website. Another SEO uh, tidbit, I know this is not a second, an SEO presentation, but one of the things that persons tend to do is when they upload images to the site, they just call it image one. You want your your images to be named correctly. So this is an image of a cat, or this is someone running. Don't just say image one and image two, because that, that would hurt your, your, that would not help your SEO for the website. Sitemaps. And that's something that a lot of people tend to, tend to neglect. And it's, it's very important. You want to use, you could use a plugin for that to generate a sitemap. And what a sitemap is, is that it tells the, you, so what happens is that when you create a site, unless this is set, unless you come here, and unless, let me just get to it real quick. Do, 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 do. All right, if this is checked, then the search engines wouldn't find your website. If this is not checked, the search engines will find your website, the contents of your website eventually. And I say I would eventually. When you submit a sitemap, what you're doing is that you're letting the search engines know that your website is there and come to find it. So you don't want to be, especially if you're creating a website for a client, the client gonna ask you, I can't find my website in a Google search. So if you want to ensure that that process is expedited, you create a sitemap, and then you submit it to Google and Bing. These are the, the two more popular search engines. And to submit a sitemap to Google and Bing, you have to use either Bing Webmaster Tool or Google Webmaster Tool. And for Bing Webmaster Tool, you need an MSN or Hotmail email address if you still have one, or a, a Gmail address for Google. And that's how you get a sitemap submitted. In addition to that, if you ever delete content from the from your website, you definitely want to let the search engines know as well. So you regenerate your you generate your you regenerate your sitemap and resubmit it to to the search engines. Something you should do after you launch your website that's very key is to do an audit. So the same way there's an accounting audit, there might be a website audit. And what a website audit looks like is you want to essentially double check every link on the website or everything that the search engines find. So not because that link is not necessarily, it's not because the link doesn't necessarily appear on the front of the website, 
that doesn't mean that that content doesn't exist. It's always good to have a, an independent person or company do it, and the goal is to keep, click on every link. Something that's interesting, and that's where we need a volunteer. Do we have anybody that would like us to do a cursory quick audit on one of their websites uh, for this presentation? Do we have anyone in the chat? Anybody, any brave souls? Come on, somebody. <laughs> it, it's not as intrusive, it's just trying to, so if you have a website in here, you can uh, post it real quick, so we can do a quick audit on, on your website. Do we have any Brave Souls? Rob, do you have a website that you want to? All right, we have one. So once they build this one, all right, let's, let's, let's do a quick audit on this site. So this is what I was talking about. You come to Google. And you do site. Let me see. Well, you definitely wanted to. You need to have it exactly how the the website appears. Okay, so this is how it appears. All right. So let's see. Make sure we're in site. So it looks like this site. Right. So this is what I'm talking about. Google does not index this site. Right. So. The, uh, what's this? You definitely want to make sure that discourage search engines from indexing the site is not checked, right? This might be one of the reasons we cannot find it. Does that make sense? Uh, sometimes, let me see if we put www in front of it. And in what I'm doing that, can somebody else? Yeah, so this site is not indexed by Google. So you definitely want to make sure that this this current search engines is not is not is not set. Anybody else? Oh, it's only been up to date. So I guess you did not submit it. So even if it was, so, and that's my point, right? If it's been up to date, is that this checklist is, would actually benefit you a lot. What we just cover here: make sure that you submit it right to the search engines. Make sure you create a sitemap. All right, we have another brief, so we have April. <laughs> Wanting us to do hers. Okay, so let's see. Again, the same thing, we want to put this in there and search it how it appears. Right. Let us see what shows up. And then put it in site. So this is this is just a quick cursory. So we can go in, we can essentially go line by line and see that she really wanted. So this is my site. This is content that April wants out there. All right, April. All right, so if it's, if it is content you want out there, that's good. And sometimes when you're doing this, you could see dummy text. So what this is is just a quick look to see if there's any. So there's about eight pages of content because the site's been out for a while. All right, so we're in the, just a quick cursory look. OK, so if there's anything out there that she doesn't want to have on here. And a lot of times, you by just doing this, you can check, right? So this looks like something that she didn't want out there. Let's see. All right, like this. This is just a generic picture, right? So that's something that she may want to, to, to remove. It's not real content, it's just a picture. So I'm guessing you get the idea. You'll get the idea. OK, this is this is kind of, and again, we're just doing a quick cursory audit. So what this does is that it finds, when you put this in as is, it finds everything that Google finds about your website in a nutshell. So sometimes you may have, you may have dummy text, you may have, you may have yeah, dummy text or test pages that you thought is not being found. That can help you. OK? So let's, let's continue. So you can use this for a Let's get to right. Let's continue the presentation. Uh, analytics, that's, that's very important, Google Analytics. And 
that is essentially just to keep track of who's coming to your website, especially if you're building websites for clients, right? Sometimes you want to use that data to let them know how much business they have going to their site, where they're coming from, especially if you plan on doing email marketing campaigns. This provides deep insights, and, and Google Analytics is a good tool to use. And for Google Analytics, you need a Gmail address to set up Google Analytics. Security, <laughs> that's a, a big, a big one. You you definitely want to limit in the login attempts from by anyone trying to get to the to the admin section. You also want to install security. I love, I love security. Uh, their free their free tool is is, is, is awesome, and their, their paid version is even better. And something that you want to to use is hacker target, especially if you want, you definitely want to lock down the website. And, and I'm going to show you how, what that looks like. So again, if I'm still permitted to use one of our brave souls here, let me get to. So we're gonna look at Andy Zone again, his website, to see how secure it is. And Andy, there's, there's a disclaimer. If anything is exposed, you may want to definitely uh, work on getting it fixed, okay? So we go to this website called Hacker Target, go to WordPress scanner, and then you type in, and again, you always want to put in the website, I believe how it appears. All right, and then you put it in here. And it's going to run a, a, a scan, as it says, to see what's going on. And there's a few things it, it may expose if some security uh, logged on hasn't been done. I actually love this tool. And this website is. Let's see. So we can tell what WordPress version that is. That's good. We can tell that it's on a shared server. It's neither a good thing or bad thing, but you can you can actually see that's 500 sites hosted on there. So you want to know that if any of these sites are hacked, your site could be hacked, and that's information that could be hidden as well. Okay. The let's see what's going to back this for the Intel. I uh, know that's good. That's good. It's good. WordPress plugins, you don't want it to say which plugins you have. So you definitely want to hide the plugins, especially if there's a security risk with a plugin. So a hacker could exploit that. Okay. But that and but the good part about it is that it's up to date. It's current, it has its release. So that's good. The plugins are up to date. And that's also good, not being able to tell the not being able to tell the what WordPress stream is being used because again it's open source and that information could could definitely pose as a as a as a risk, especially if that theme is not secure itself. And that's also good. The users are not exposed. The admin users are not exposed. Some websites you run this on there and you get to see the username. So all you have to do is just run a few iterations and then get the password, all right? Sometimes you also want to hide this, but this is, this is, this is a, fairly, a, fairly secure, a, a fairly secure site. I'll, I'll give it a B as well. Everything it shows, it's not, there's nothing there I can say that's a, an imminent risk that you have to go and fix right away. The only thing I say in here is the fact I said a shared host and we could see all the other sites on there. But not, of course, it's not doing your WordPress version and some other things here. It, that's that's fairly good. Do we have any other Brave Souls that I don't want to run this through this, this system? Does anybody, does anybody, anybody else? All right. So that's something. So let's do a quick, let's see where we are in the presentation as well uh, before we take some questions. Let us see. Okay, so something else that's that's really important is to have an authentication plugin. I'm sure many of you have received 
emails from the WordPress website and it goes directly to spam. And the reason that happens is that the Gmail especially or these email servers does not see it as an email that's been authenticated. So that means anybody could be posing as you or posing as that email address. So any emails that you want to send from your, from your website, you want to ensure that it's, it's authenticated. And what that means is one, you install a plugin that allows you, allows that to happen. In addition to that, the email address has to be ideally from that domain name.com. So contact or uh, webmaster at that domain name.com is what's gonna send that email that's coming from that website. So the way you set this up is that it's very similar to if you were setting up an email address on your phone, you get the right protocols and you're still getting the plugins. If you have a G Suite email or Gmail or G Suite email, you would have to use the WP Gmail SMTP and it's an additional process to do that. But the, the plugin explains how to get that done. And the reason you want to do that is to ensure that the emails sent from the website ends up in the inbox. Okay. And the thing, thing that's it here. So let's do a quick recap. And then I'll also take some questions in a little bit. The, so if we're doing a recap here, let's go over what you should, your checklist, right? Do you have a back of your website? Ideally, yes. Is your WordPress versions up to date? You say yes. Do you have comments disabled and capture enabled? You said no. Do you have Puma link set in a user-friendly way without numbers? Yes. Is the website SEO friendly? Ideally, yes. Is your sitemap submitted to Google and Bing Webmaster? Yes. Have an audit been done on your website? A lot of times that, that's one of the no's. And do you have a Google, do you have Google Analytics on your website? As a recap, yes. Do you have any security measures to prevent hacking, like limited login attempts? or even security install, you can say yes. And it's a website, ADA compliant. So that's something actually that we, we didn't talk about, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't discuss it, but definitely that's something that's, that you wanna check. So is your website ADA compliant? Yes, and what that looks like is this. So you notice this icon right here at the bottom of, notice this icon right here. That means anyone in the can access this site by using this tool. And this is a free read widget right, that you can install. And someone for disability can come on here and use these different features of that tool. One of the cool parts Screen about reader is, enabled. Use yeah. the arrow keys to select items to read. Accessible. We are a web development company and we love building stunning websites. All right. Header. So it, it definitely Keyboard reads, navigation enabled. It reads the content All of All accessibility site. enhancements reset. And recently, accessibility has become a big deal. Companies are getting sued for not being ADA compliant. Now, accessibility is, is really its own separate topic. If you don't know more about it, there's been a lot of WordPress presentations about it. And there's a difference between being accessible and compliant. So a website is accessible because we have this tool that gives the ability to someone disabled to access it. However, it's not fully compliant. And for it to be fully compliant, the features that this tool makes accept available would have to be implemented at the website's core, at the website's core. All right, but at, at the minimum, we have something that a disabled person can access our website with. Okay, and, and before I take uh, 
questions as well, if I jump back to the presentation and then wrap up that part of it, so we can we can dive into some questions. If we have, if there's anyone new here, one of the things that we do just to give back to the community and to teach people WordPress, we do have a, a free five-day creative own website challenge coming up. So if there's anyone new to WordPress, and what we'll be using in this presentation is DB. That 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 and it's it's in a few weeks. If you register now, I'm sure that we don't have 20 persons registered as yet. So be one of the first 20. And if you know anyone that wants to use WordPress or interested in learning WordPress, you may want to share that information with them. So they can register at www.bestwbtraining.com uh, for this free uh, workshop. All right, and again, my, my, um, <laughs> this is my family. My company is a, a family-owned uh, company, and this is the, I always tell my wife that our, our daughter is the, is the, is the, owner, is the children of the company because when we're gone, she'll be the one uh, taking over. And she's, a, she's also a WordPress enthusiast. She's been ready to two WordCamps. 